Hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for this week's Object Talk. My name is Emma and I'm an Engagement Officer at the Jewish Museum London. This week you are joining me for an object on the theme of interfaith. I've chosen a photograph that is one of over 40,000 objects in the Jewish Museum of London's designated collection. A collection that shows the diversity of Jewish life and culture and our programmes exist to explore those connections between faiths and cultures. I am now going to share my screen so you can have a closer look at this object. We can see a black and white photograph that shows a Jewish man learning Hindi. Now we've just been celebrating Interfaith Week and our collection shows many examples of people of different faiths coming together for a shared cause and to learn from each other. Education and a willingness to listen and learn about other faiths and cultures is a really key part of Interfaith. This photograph was taken in the mid 20th century and shows an interfaith dialogue in action. The man on our right is labelled as a Shastri. This is a degree in the old college system in India, which allowed pupils to become accredited as religious teachers. He is teaching the man on the left Hindi. This man is Hugo Green, who would go on to become a leading figure in interfaith discussion. But I would actually like to start this object talk by going backwards rather than forwards, by going to look at his childhood. Hugo Green was born in Czechoslovakia in June 1930. We have in our collection this photograph here. The family photograph shows him as second from our left. There is his mother Bella, his brother Gabriel or Gabby, and his father Gaza. Only Hugo and his mother Bella survived the Holocaust. In May 1944, the family, including the grandparents, were sent to Auschwitz. Hugo was just 13 years old. However, when he got off the train at Auschwitz, he was advised by a prisoner there to say that he was in fact 19 years old and a carpenter. He was then sent to the labour camp section along with his father. His brother, who we can see in this photograph, was murdered in the gas chambers, aged just 10 years old. His grandparents were also murdered on arrival to Auschwitz. In horrendously challenging times, it is incredible to think of the strong faith that Hugo's father kept and taught his son. Hugo would later recount an experience in Auschwitz that stayed with him throughout his life. On the first night of Hanukkah, his father made a makeshift Hanukkah lamp and used his meagre ration of margarine to light a wick. Hugo describes himself as having been shocked that his father would use his precious food in this way. His father then spoke these words that stayed with him throughout his life. My child, we know you can live three days without water. You can live three weeks without food, but you cannot live for three minutes without hope. Green later said, God was with us at Auschwitz when I prayed as hard as I knew how. Hugo and his father were sent on a death march before being liberated on the 4th of May, 1945. Just a few days later, his father passed away from exhaustion and typhus. Hugo then came to Britain after the war as a child survivor. He is pictured in this photograph. He is the sixth child from the right. This photograph was taken in Prague in February 1946. All the children shown in this photograph were child survivors of the Holocaust. It is just nine months since Hugo was liberated that he came to this country. He studied here and a particular influence on him was Leo Beck. This is a name that you may well be familiar with already as the Leo Beck Institute continues his legacy. We can see a photograph of Leo Beck here. He was a German rabbi who had survived the Holocaust in the Theresienstadt concentration camp. Leo Beck gave lectures in Theresienstadt 
and these have been credited with helping prisoners find faith and strength during incredibly horrific times. Heinrich Leibrecht said of him and of his lectures, from here came the impulse to really endure and the belief that we were able to do so. Leo also believed in the importance of interfaith dialogue and set up discussions between Jewish people and Christian people within the camp. These Christians had often been labelled as Jewish by the Nazi party, often because they had Jewish relatives. However, they themselves did not identify as Jewish. They identified as Christian and practised Christianity. Nero Beck worked to promote unity and understanding between a Christian and Jewish people inside the camp. After liberation, when in London, Nero Beck became Hugo's mentor and he may well have influenced Hugo's own interest in interfaith discussions. He helped him to make the decision to become a rabbi and Hugo went to America to train to be a rabbi within the reform movement. This photo shows him training in New York to become a rabbi. He was ordained in 1957 and after briefly returning to the UK when he got married, he was sent to Bombay by the World Union for Progressive Jewish Studies, where he served until 1960. So that brings me back to the very first photograph that we were looking at. Now, we do not have the exact date that this photograph was taken, but we believe it would have been whilst he was in Bombay, so sometime between 1957 and 1960. In this photograph, we can see him patiently learning from his Hindu teacher, taking time to find out about another faith and culture, a very important part of interfaith. He would go on to spend 32 years as rabbi of the West London Synagogue. And during that time, he continued to promote interfaith and the importance of understanding different cultures, and peaceful and harmonious relationships, which he recognized did not just happen, but required hard work. For over 20 years, he was on the Standing Committee for Interfaith Dialogue in Education, the focus of this organisation being religious understanding and tolerance within schools. He was the founder and the first chairman of the Interfaith Network, an organisation that incorporates many interfaith organisations across the country and he was heavily involved in the Council of Christians and Jews, an interfaith charity that still promotes tolerance and understanding of faith, and who incidentally led one of our October object talks for us. Hugo Grin was also a lecturer at the Leo Beck College, where he spread his message of tolerance to a wide audience. He spread this message to an even wider audience when he then began to appear on BBC radio programmes, such as being a regular panellist on The Moral Maze. He was also a leading voice in Holocaust education. He is pictured here returning to Auschwitz in 1989, 45 years after his family was sent there. He had seen firsthand what happens when there is not respect or understanding between people of different faiths and cultures, how horrific the outcomes can be, and how important it is to remember what took place and to work to promote tolerance and peace. We are so proud to have photographs of Rabbi Hugo Green in our museum collection and to continue to tell his story nearly 25 years after his death. I would like to end by a quote from him. Time is short and the task is urgent. Evil is real, so is good. There is a choice and we are not so much chosen as choosers. Thank you so much for joining me for this object talk. Do join me again for another object talk next week, continuing on the theme of support. I will see you there.